Hey guys, hope you're well. So in this lesson, we're gonna look at simplifying ratios. So I'm gonna quickly explain how it all works. It's pretty straightforward. And then on the next slide, we will practice some examples. Okay, so let's say, for example, that in your class, there are, uh, let's say, 15 boys and 20 girls. Okay, that's how many learners there are in your class. So as a ratio, we could say 15 to 20. And then they're going to ask you to simplify the ratio. So to make it smaller. So the way that you do it is you need to find a number that can go into this one. And it can also go into this one. Any number that you can think of. So you might think of the number 2, but that won't work. Because 2 cannot go into 15. What about the number five? The number five can go into this one. So I'm gonna divide this one by five, and I'm gonna divide this one by five. It must be the same. And if I say 15 divided by five, I will end up with three. And if I say 20 divided by five, I will end up with four. Now, if I look at the numbers three and four, can you make those any smaller? Like, is there a number that can go into both of those? Well, no, that is, Therefore, the most simplified ratio that we have. So you have 15 boys and 20 girls. But if you simplify that, that means that for every three boys, there's four girls. Okay? And so that is what simplifying a ratio means. You're just breaking it down smaller. Let's do another one quickly. So let's say we have the number 25 and we have the number um, 4. Let's go with, can I, let's not use 25. Let's use 12 and let's use 22, okay? And you have to simplify this now. So what number can go into both of these? Well, the number two can definitely go into both. Um, sometimes there's more than one kind of number and it doesn't really matter which one you use. So if you say 12 divided by two, that'll be six. And if you say 22 divided by two, that'll be 11. Now there is no number that can go into both of those. So that would be the final answer. Let's do one more and then we'll go practice some examples. So let's say we take the number um, 24 and the number 40. Now, what number can go into both of those? Well, the number two can go into both of those. Uh, the number four can also go in. Now, let's just say we chose the number two, okay? So that would give you 12, and that would give you 20. But now, the number two can go into both of these. You could even use the number four, but let's just use two, doesn't matter. Then that will give you six, and that'll give you 10. Now, the number two can still go into both of those. So you see, we can just keep going on, and that'll give us three, and that'll give us five, and then we stop there. If I come back to the beginning, 24 and 40, we could have saved ourselves a lot of time if we just realized that the number eight can go in. The bigger the number, the faster you will get to your final answer. Because 24 divided by eight is three, 40 divided by eight is five. So it doesn't matter though, if you want to use smaller numbers, you will eventually get to the same exact answer. Okay, so let's go practice now. There's some interesting things coming up, especially when we start getting to these kinds of questions down here, where you have to know how to convert between uh, distances like meters, millimeters, centimeters, all of that, and then also mass like grams, kilograms, milligrams. Okay, so I'll explain all of that as we get there. So let's start with this one over here. So 24 to 64. So I'm just going to write that over here. So all I want you to do is think of a number that can go into both. Don't waste too much time with that. Yes, there could be big numbers, but if you're in a test and you're feeling a bit stressed, if you can only think of the number two, that's okay. So that'll give us 12 and that'll give us 32. Now, what number can go into both of those? Well, some of you might say four, that is correct, but maybe you're stressed and you're in an exam and the only number you can think of is a two and that is okay because that'll give you six and 16 and then you can try the number two again and that'll give you three and eight. If you used a bigger number in the beginning, you could have used the number eight, you would have got to the answer immediately. It doesn't matter though. As long as you have a number, it will eventually become, it will eventually break the numbers down, 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 until eventually you get to this part over here where you cannot break it down 
any further. Okay, so that would be the answer there. Okay, so here we have the number 40 and 54. So I'm gonna put that together for 40 and 54. Now, I can't think of a bigger number than two, so I'm just gonna go with that. So that'll give me 20 and 27. Now, there is actually no number that can go into both of those. That's quite interesting. So that is actually the final answer. You could try find a number, but there isn't one. Um, that's literally the smallest that it could ever become. Right, so let's move on to the next one, 34 and 90, 34 and 90. So 34, 90. I like to start with the number two, so that'll give me 17 and 45. And then you can't go any smaller than that. So that's literally the answer. Now we're gonna get to this one. It's got three of them. So all that you need to do there is you need to find a number that can go into all three. So 80, 100, and 40. Now I'm not gonna go with the number two because I know that there's a much bigger number that was pretty easy to think about. But if you did use a two, that's also okay. So that's gonna give me eight, 10, four. Now I know that the number two can go into all of those. That'll give me four, five, two. And that is it. You might say, yeah, but Kevin, the number two can go into these two. But remember, it has to go into all three of them. Okay, so the answer for that one is gonna be a four, a five, and a two. Okay, now when you get to distance, all you need to do is just remember the following. Kilometers, always kilometers first, then meters, then centimeters, then millimeters. Now, as you go this way, you will multiply, and as you go this way, you will divide. Then, just put the number 1000 over here, the number 100 over here, and the number 10. So the way that it works is, if you, for example, I'll give you, I'll give you a little example here. If you wanna convert two kilometers to centimeters, okay? So you have two kilometers, now that's over here, and you wanna go to centimeters. So you're going to the right. And when you go to the right, you multiply. So what are you gonna multiply? Well, you're gonna multiply by a thousand, and then you're gonna multiply by a hundred. Because when you multiply by a thousand, that takes you to meters, and then you'd multiply by another hundred, and that'll take you to centimeters. And that would give you 200,000 centimeters. Let me give you another example. Let's say you have to convert um, 5,000, or let's go um, 525,000, or let's go 5,250,000 um, millimeters to kilometers, okay? So now we're starting with millimeters, so millimeters is here, and we're going all the way to kilometers. So we're going to the left, left means divide. So you would say five, two, five, one, two, three, four, and then you're gonna divide by 10. So that'll take you, if you divide by 10, that'll take you to centimeters. Then you're gonna divide by 100, and then you're gonna divide by 1,000. And if you had to go calculate this, that'll give you 5.25 kilometers. Okay, so here we have centimeters and meters. So we're gonna go 150 centimeters and five meters. So now let me, I shouldn't have erased that. Kilometers, meters, centimeters, millimeters. Um, it must go in that order, hey guys, 100 and then 10. And then if you go this way, multiply. And if you go that way, divide. So you need to change either this one or change this one. Don't change both of them, that would be a bit silly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this one, which is in meters, okay? So that's over here, and I'm gonna change it to centimeters. So I'm gonna change it to centimeters. So the rule says that I'm going to multiply, because I'm going to the right, and I'm gonna multiply by 100. So I'm gonna say five multiplied by 100, and that'll be 500. So now I have 150 centimeters and 500 centimeters. When these two are the same, that is good. Then you can ignore them. And now it just becomes a normal kind of question that we've looked at um, before. So you need to find a number that can go into both of these. Yes, you could use the number two, but a better one would be the number 10. Even the number 50 would be even faster. But let's say use 10. Now 150 divided by 10 is 15. 
500 divided by 10 is 50. Now the number 5 can go into both of those. Here it goes 3 times, here it goes 10 times, and you're not going to get any smaller than that. And so that would be your answer over there. Okay, and then this question over here is now grams going to kilograms. So for this one, the important things that you could use would be um, ton. Sometimes they're going to give you ton. You know, like when you say something is like very heavy, you say, for example, it's two tons. And then you've got kilogram, gram, milligram. Now, the easy one with mass is that you use a thousand between all of these. You don't use a 10, 100, and a 1,000 like we do with distance. With mass, we always do it this way. Now, once again, if you go that way, multiply, and if you go that way, divide. Okay, so they've given us grams and kilograms. Okay, so they've given us grams and kilograms. I always use the one on the left, and I change that one. So the one that's further on the left is kilograms, because here's grams, here's kilograms and they've given us grams and kilograms. So I choose the one that's further to the left on this scale. So I'm gonna change this one, and I'm gonna change it to uh, grams. So the rule says I'm gonna multiply by a 1,000. So I'm gonna say 1.2 multiplied by a 1,000, and that'll give me 1,200 grams. Now I have 300, and I have 1,200, and now because I have grams for both, I can ignore them, and now it just becomes a normal question. So you could divide both by 100, for example. You could have used 10. You could have used 50. You could have used 2. There's many different numbers you could have used. It doesn't matter. We're all going to get to the same answer at the end. So if you divide them, you're going to end up with a 3. And if you divide this one, you're going to end up with a 12. Now, the number 3 can go into both of these, and that will therefore give us an answer that is 1 and 4. So 1 to four. And then when you give your answer for these ones, you don't put the centimeters and the meters back or anything like that. No, you just leave it completely like that.